This video is for you if you write JavaScript, you're interested in Rust, and you have no idea what a type is. Let's start with something you know. Here's a function in JavaScript. The addTo function takes an argument and adds a number of value 2 to it. You already know this, but what I just said is the key insight to what types are. A number of value 2. The value 2 is a number type. That is, types and values are different. A type, like number, is a bag of values, like 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5, that are valid for that type. A number in JavaScript is a type that contains numbers that are very low and numbers that are very high. The value 2 is a number type. Similarly, the value false is a Boolean type. Let's take that knowledge that you're already familiar with and look at the same function written in Rust. There are a lot of similarities here. fn instead of function, snake case underscore instead of camel case, the biggest difference, however, is that we have to specify the types we're working with, both for the argument that the function accepts and the return type that the function returns. The type we've specified is an F64, which is the exact same implementation of a number type in JavaScript. If you want to get specific, an F64 can be explained in two parts. The F stands for float, which means we can use decimals. And the 64 defines what the largest number that this type can contain is. Rust definitely has more number types than JavaScript, but why? Let's revisit the function we wrote earlier. If we pass in the value 4, we get the value 6. This is expected, and it's exactly what we wrote this function to do. If we pass in 4.0, we still get 6. So far, so good. If we pass in the value something, which is a string, JavaScript will happily concatenate 4 to the end of the value. Our function now both accepts and returns a string which is a different type than when we passed in a number. The same thing happens if we pass in an array of strings. The whole array gets coerced to a string itself, with four concatenated onto the end of the string. In JavaScript, this may or may not be what you expected, depending on how familiar you are with JavaScript, but in Rust, this kind of pass any value and figure it out behavior isn't allowed. Consider the following full Rust program that uses our original addTo function. If we pass in 4.0, everything is great. Small side note here, Debug is very much like console.log. So if you're not too experienced with Rust yet, just replace debug with console.log. If we change the way we call add to like we did in the JavaScript example, we immediately start running into errors. Specifically, we start running into errors not at runtime, but when we go to compile our program. A to literal in Rust suddenly isn't in F64. We have to include the decimal place for it to be considered in F64. The same thing happens for the other examples. Consider the error messages for add to with a string of something or add to with a vec of a, b, and c characters. These are all the same error message. A vec of characters is not in F64. A string is also not in F64. In JavaScript, types are assigned and checked when we're running our application. Can plus be used on the value contained in my num is a runtime decision. In contrast to JavaScript, Rust checks these things at compile time way before we've run our program. So when we say we want to operate on values of type F64, Rust will check this for us. And when we try to pass in a value whose type is not an F64, Rust will warn us about this before we finish our compilation. If we continue thinking about types as bags of potential values, we can understand the difference between these possible implementations. Our first option is changing the number type. The value four when written without a decimal as a literal number is not an F64, it's actually an integer. So we can change the function that we wrote to operate on unsigned integers. Integers are numbers without decimal places. Note that if we do this, we also have to change the 2.0 in our function implementation to be an integer as well. 2.0 is not an integer, the same way 2.1 or 2.2 wouldn't be. Only the number two with no decimal places is. If we move on to the string example, we're faced with a decision. What do we actually want this to do if we pass in a string? Adding a string and an integer doesn't work, and Rust tells us so when we compile. In this case, I don't want to do this to a string. Like, There's no implementation here that makes sense for me because I only want to add two numbers together. So I won't even write this function, which means that we won't even be able to call it if we want to call it on a string, which is a good thing because we don't get the unexpected behavior that we get from the JavaScript implementation if we pass in a type that the function that we wrote isn't expecting. We would have the same decision to make 
if we were going to write this function for the VEC implementation. What does it mean to add two to a VEC? Does it mean we push the number onto the VEC and thus have a VEC of more numbers? Or do we do what JavaScript did and we two string everything and then add two to the end of the string? Well, that's up to you. What your program actually does is your decision. But using Rust's type system, we can guarantee that the functions that we write accept values of the type that we expect and return values of the type that we expect. This gives us more confidence in what our program is actually doing and is capable of doing and prevents us from misusing functions on types that were never meant to be passed into them in the first place. I hope you enjoyed this intro to Rust video. Why don't you check out the next one and take the next step?